Pikachu is set. It won't be able to take on all of those Grimer at once.
bridges from beneath the sand. Don't stop with me, come sing song for a land. Across the universe, she lives on all her Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for sticking with us through a brief little bit of delay there. We are finally about ready to get into a little bit of collegiate action for tonight. My name is Kyle Corvus Crow, joined as always on the desk by the one and only wonderful Coco the Dragon, as we've got a little bit of action coming down between two North Carolina teams. Lee's McCray out of uh, Banner Elk, I believe. And then, of course, Barton College as well. Yeah, so I'm going to be really interested to see how both of these teams turn out. They're both very new uh, into the into the scene and into the collegiate scene more specifically. And so being young bloods and young teams that they are, it's really just a proven gun. This specific season, not only just if they do make it to the playoffs, but just threw on this entire sort of round-robin style that they have in the group stages, just sort of seeing exactly how they are able to compare up against one of the other sort of stronger teams or even teams of the same caliber where they are just sort of filing out all the wrinkles that are going through as being as new they, as they are. And especially with sort of seeing exactly if they're going to be going with like more traditional style of like collegiate where it's like you find your solo carry and you just fully invest in that solo carry or you try and make a little bit more team cohesion and actually understand fully okay this is how our team operates as a unit and then let's really bolster that performance yeah i mean something that they have to be looking for as well as both of these teams i believe are in pursuit of their first win throughout the collegiate season i think one of the teams sitting on 0-3, one of them 0-2, uh, you know, some buys and the ways that works out, shakes out. But either way, my research was correct earlier today. Both of these guys still hunting for that first W in the column here. And we're at a point late enough in the season where, you know, you let three games go by, 
you got to start putting some on the board if you hope to stay in the hunt for you know a little bit more of that action later on in the season. Yeah, and that's exactly where we are right now, right? Like you, it's you mentioned time. zero and two, zero and three. Someone's gonna win. Like we're mm-hmm. not gonna end this game with both nope. of them going zero and four. That's statistically impossible. But we did have the pro draft go through just a few moments ago as we were sort of getting the whole lobby in order it was pretty bugged out some people weren't able to join had to get them back in but now we're going to be running through the draft fairly quickly so we can sort of give an overall view of how these two sort of approached each other and like looking just at the band specifically i'm looking at the bottom lane the bottom lane is looking very scary for barton Mm. and for uh lise mccray as well because they threw a lot of bands there Yeah, certainly I think the focal point for both of these teams as they're looking to come in and kind of sweep this match away. You mentioned both of those carries uh, are are funneling into, you know, one particular carry for the game. Uh, I was doing some research. It looked like the highest ranked player on each of these teams was the support, oddly enough. Yes. So I'm very curious to see kind of how that one plays around. Usually good support, good AD carry. That's kind of how the collegiate meta does tend to shake out there in my experience. And so I would be surprised if that's not going to focus a lot of effort on those two in the bot lane, the Jinx and the Jin in particular, and kind of see who's got the the better in-game coaching, perhaps. Yeah, and I think that's sort of the best way to sort of translate a sort of skill differential when you're looking at the highest ranked players being in those support positions. That's where they're going to have a lot of comfort being able to sort of sit in the back line, being like, hey, this is how we're supposed to shot call. Or they are sort of in those very front midst of the, like in the midst of the fight and being the ones making the call to engage, to find the right pick, to look for the objective at the proper time. So seeing how these two supports are able to sort of lead their teams in those situations is really going to sort of separate them in this overall matchup in this series because both these teams vying for that first win they have to double down on the strengths that they have been able to find in those losing matchups that they've had earlier in the season and with the compositions that we've made i'm looking at the hyper carry of the bottom lane here for lee's mccray and how they sort of built around that and then for barton seeing how well they can sort of make this pick comp that they're sort of cooking up work Uh, You know, you touched on the golden word, I think, there in your last sentence, engage. You said engage. That's what both of these teams have brought to the table. (laughs) Take a look at these compositions. It is just insane the amount of go buttoning that they are able to kind of attack each other with here. Now, uh, obviously, everything on the pro draft is not uh, not correct, what you're seeing on the screen for stream here. Uh, We do have a couple of amendments to make, as I think they did run another pro draft if i'm not crazy here yeah so um, they did run another one uh the wukong that you see is actually going to be an akali there is a dr mundo jungle as well for the side of barton and mm-hmm. then the Jin and rakan are correct so luckily we know how that bottom lane is going to be going same and with jinx then, Brom, yep. yep and jinx Brom are also the same so the bottom lanes were correct on that one thankfully and then finally for the top side on lee's mccray is that it is a shivana in that top side. So not actually good. something I want to keep an eye on because we have not seen a Shivana in the top lane specifically for myself, like at least a year. <laughs> like it yeah. Is, I th- it's I, like season four feels jungle. like season four. I mean, we're back there, right? Shivana Mundo yeah. in the same game on opposing lanes. Thankfully Mundo's jungle this time. I missed something here. We were so it caught is. up in the lobby <laughs> and, uh, and some of this, this other stuff that I completely spaced on the fact that that is Rakan mid. So yeah. yeah, that's Rakan mid. Leona is the support. So Filsom, uh, Filsom 8 here is running the Rakan right down the mid lane, and he's going to be into an Ari matchup. I don't even know where to begin to unpack this one, Coco. I've never seen this before. Well, I think you actually, you called me out on this with the word of engagement, and yeah. it's really like, like that's Barton right now. Like you've got the quickening going in, you've got Leona with her entire kit, with a solar flare, and her zenith blade to just go in on a target, and it is just push, push, push. There's no way that we're going to find any way to retreat, because by the time that we've thrown all of our tools onto the board, there, like there's just going to be nothing but just as 
beaten warpath and that's really their entire investment so like if they start to lose early on and they are having different skir- like very difficult skirmishes that are not going their way they're starting to lose grip in sort of wave management and control in those early stages i'm really worried for barton because of that all all for nothing factor but then you look on the side of lee's mccray where it's like okay our laning phase is difficult to execute outside of the Ari. Yes, Jinx and Braum is a safe situation, but when you're going up against Jin and Leona, safe is not a word that I come into no. question, even with a Braum being in your back pocket. We'll see how it all does shake out. I think a lot of pressure on the mighty shoulders of this particular Braum and how Arrow's going to play that one. But of course, unfortunately, we didn't make you wait to start. We got to make you wait yet again as the three minute delay is ticking on down. We're going to throw it to a quick break. Before we do, of course, want to give a quick shout out to one of our wonderful sponsors, GameStop, and of course, their esports weeklies. They got a huge variety of weeklies going on in their uh, entire season kind of following our season pattern as well you can kind of see the schedule there i mean we got league csgo madden overwatch rocket league hearthstone smash everything your esports hearts could want you can find out more information at gamestop.com slash esports really easy get the power to the players but with that we're throwing you over to a quick break and when we come back we'll get into game number one Well, thank you for sticking with us through the delay. Ladies and gentlemen, we are ready to get into the action. It looks like Lise McRae might just be ready as well. Five stack in the brush. Oh, we'll see if boy. Find anybody. Ward's already down over the blue wall here. And the Braum, they've definitely been spotted out, so... Yeah. Don't think they're going to get too much out of this one. The vision control just means it's going to be you know, flipped right back on its head. The good news for the side of Barton is, hey, you know what? Just run and we're going to do this to their blue as well because there's five here. So obviously stacking up just fine. A lot of information going down. A little bit of yin and yang on this. Nothing too crazy. Yeah, so the counter invade, though, is a little bit tricky for both of these teams. Like, yes, you go in with the level one, your Braum is going to be naturally stronger with those engagements, even against the Leona and Rakan possibilities. But then looking into possibly, like, Tuki just, like, running in and just straight checking this blue buff and walking into three people, that's always, like, the interesting question. He might possibly just do that, but they already started the blue buff, so he will be able to, like, just, like, recall. 
and get away from that. Just sort of tell them the information and be like, look, both these teams are going to convert into vertical jungling. Just go straight to your red when you're done. If not, honestly, if I was oh. if I was Mike the OG right there, I would have gone for those camps. I would have taken Wolf and Gromp and just no questions asked. Take as much as you can from So Lucky's Mundo because Mundo just wants to farm. And so do you. You both want to get to level six as fast as possible, even with the amount of lane setup that both these teams have. Like I look at how Barton has Leona and Jin. I'm going to fully invest as Mundo to just constantly destroy this bottom lane of Tommy Gun and Arrow Burp. Like, and even like mid lane, but once you hit that level 6 point, it's going to be super difficult, difficult to actually disengage or re-engage into any of these sort of lane skirmish matchups. Lane skirmishes. Looks like Disco guys getting very aggressive onto Tugi here in the top lane. I don't expect too much to come out of that, but you would expect a little bit maybe here from the Akali to tip in the favor. Shyvana takes a little bit longer here, and I think a good team is going to be able to punish that one out pretty, pretty yeah. effectively. So I am curious to see how that one goes. The alternative is that So Lucky on the Mundo, not going to be the most effective ganker in that top lane, which is one of the best lanes to gank as it is an island. His HP is kind of in the toilet already after just the one clear with a couple camps left up even. So he's already mm -hmm. back into base. Curious yeah. on the slower starts. Meanwhile, of course, we do have the solo red buff, Mike the OG, hurting for some mana at this point, using it all on this one. We're going to be forced to back early as well here. Some rough starts with the way these invades panned out. Yeah, we kind of forgot to mention that Brom took the blue buff, but hold on, Brom actually takes some pass. Ooh, Tuki actually in some real trouble as well up here in the top lane. He is going to get first blooded while that's going on in the bot lane. We might have a little bit more action, but I think the gank was just unfortunate tied over, and that's what we were talking about with... Disco guy really being able to press this advantage. Yeah, so with that, the, the slow fight dis disengage, and of course, with Akali already naturally being a stronger trader at, at these early stages, this could be beneficial. But we're now looking at the bottom lane. So lucky, seeing if he could land some kind of cleavers. The Zenith oh. blade being missed was most important. That oh. lets him get out. No uh, summoners being used. Absolutely, a couple cleavers tacked onto that one. And the red buff is going to hurt as well, but. Yeah, if you cannot hit the Leona Zenith Blade, that's just gonna do you yeah. there, unfortunately. So they still exhausted the flash two on Tommy Gun, thankfully. So they could come back for a return gank later on. They just need to bait that out, which you already have Olshi Nugget and Golden Lotus sort of trying to see if they can revert that back in. And Tommy Gun is playing their game. He's just hard pushing back in, rebounding the wave. So it just gives so lucky in attempt number two without really any consequence. Consequence is key here, I think, particularly for these two teams, because so lucky just chilling down here on this bottom side, there waiting for the appropriate time. And yeah, it all connects. The CC is here. The exhaust is down. The flash is out. And what a beautiful set of chompers by the Jinx just to hold them in place because. Tommy Gun really just stalled it all right out there. Just held him right in place. Beautifully done by the Jinx living up to the Tommy Gun name. But I still take that as a win there for Bart and the fact that they used two ultim or two summoners, excuse me, the heal and then the flash from mm -hmm. Arrow. Like you're losing all of these summoner spells in the bottom lane. Sure, you haven't given up a kill yet to any of the members, but you already have Disco Guy sort of gaining traction in that top side, which means you need to keep maybe like, keep yourself safe at all points. Like yes, lucky for us, Cloud Drake isn't going to be a top priority for either the junglers, so you're not going to feel that much like mid lane and jungle presence. Right. But once you hit level six, like this is where the other question for me is how much roaming potential these two mid laners are going to have. Because Ari, she can go out, clear the wave, push it as fast as possible, and then look to find a gank onto either Disco Guy or also double down into this bottom lane and possibly look for some advantage for this Jinx to get into that power spike window for her in an earlier stage of the game. Or, like, with Filsum, who's going to be sort of in this awkward state of, like, I can't out-push the Ari, but can I roam as fast as her? Like, if she pushes me out, can I sacrifice a turret plate or two to go and counter gank? Yeah, he is the utility counter gank, I think, of this one. So lucky, maybe a little unlucky in this one, if you can't get the blast one off the right way. Hey, takes a second with it, but there yeah. you go. At the end of the day, he is out and just fine. You talk about the roam, and conversely, you said roam onto Disco Guy. I wonder if Disco Guy is not going to be the one roaming, right? This isn't a Kali with more CS than anybody else in the game. We'll have Teleport up uh, before too long, around the time of, I think, relevant fights to come through. Yeah. And 
is certainly ahead of you know his own lane matchup. So I think if we're looking at candidates to possibly roam through this one, that could be it. But meanwhile, we got an all-in perhaps in the mid. We'll see if they do take it on back off. The Ignite was down. I think they decided, hey, you know what? We both used our combos. We don't want to throw down flashes. Still some saving the Ignite. Maybe thinks a little bit better of it. He is quite behind only in items. He hasn't backed yet. He's only got the Doran's Ring. And we've got basically a full back and by coming out of Persuasion there. So we'll see how they do catch yeah, up. And I want to see what he for this. Yeah, like, how does a Rakan mid itemize, right? Like, if you think that maybe last chapter you just rushed through Zeko, you have Electrocute, you're looking for just that first damage as it is, so the more the merrier. And speaking of more, Micro G is sitting in this top side, seeing if he can get some kind of advantage back into Tuki's hands. They do have the Ignite, they have the level 6 available. There you go, Dragon's pop, so they have the five. Yeah, they want to get down on this Disco guy, just turning it on to Mike the OG, though. Look at this Nocturne, he's already slayed out. And Tuki may be caught on this one as well. There's minions there. Disco guy, I think, decides better of it. He is going to back that one off, but that's the second kill already tacked onto the top lane. I like the ambition from the side of Lee's McCray, but the call was a little bit awkward. You are in a spot where you can't naturally burst out the Akali. She hadn't lost her actual shroud just yet and hold on tummy guns in a bad spot oh yeah caught all the way here surprise it is of course the moon doe and that means Olshi nugget's gonna get the slay out on that one giving it right to the gin and barton stacks their third kill and with that death now with Mike OG also losing his life earlier in the top side he needs to catch up just so lucky he's two levels down right now he has no, no way to actually contest this drake unless he is able to steal it away must be persuasive was not able to do that so they're able to get that cloud drake three kills up on the board and starting to hit to a point where the gold lead in the lanes naturally are just going to be just a few items ahead like a long sword or just a pair of boots to where those will slowly become more influential once we get to that mid-game stage we're still about nine minutes in turret plates are going to be up for the next five minutes but at this point you've got a minute until rift herald if i'm barton right now just go ahead clear this bottom side out for so lucky's mundo go back Get some more items under your, your belt. You have 900 gold in your like in your pocket right now. Mm -hmm. See if you can complete that bomby cinder, and then go into the top side with a control ward. Clear the vision. Get some dominance so you can get that rift herald, and then fully double down on Disco guys. A Kali break him out of that lane. So then when a Kali's power spike is up with the hextech gunblade, you go right into this bottom lane and just absolutely shred that jinx apart. Truly, at this point, I think you could honestly flex So Lucky into the top lane, leave him just up against Tuki Shyvana at this point, and then just create a kind of roaming clear jungle sometimes role for Disco Guy. He's far enough yeah. ahead at this point that if that's the route you wanted to go, I think he could be an absolute terror to these inevitably very squishy, I think, targets on the side of Lee's McCray here. Mm -hmm. Definitely. It is a very big possibility. So for them, it's question of how quickly they're executing it and if it's even on their plate right now because a lot of these young teams these young organizations for the collegiate scene they're still in that little bit of a solo queue mentality when the lane like even though the turrets are still up they constantly are thinking about it is still laning phase when it's already a point where your colleague could walk into the jungle and just assassinate Michael g's nocturne at any point and have no problem or be like or be punished at all from tuki shivana so it's a question of like sort of learning themselves and learning the actual strength of where they're at right now and then converting that into a global presence instead of just an individual perspective. Individual perspective looking very favorable towards Persuasion on this Ari in the mid lane. If he can keep the damage at a distance. Pilsum feels like he's been on the back foot, but he has been CSing well. Now, meanwhile, in the top lane, we do have a gank on to Tuki. He has to ult out of this one, but Disco Guy running right in so lucky does not mind taking a tower shot for that one and is able to pop right back on a fourth kill to the name here for Barton. And these McCray have to answer quickly. And look at the itemization that Tuki has been going. He went straight for a BF sword, even after losing his lane and going zero to being 30 CS down. At this point, Shivana just has to forfeit and sort of build a tanky and beefy role. I mean, go into something like a Steric's Gage or into a Phage to where you have a little bit of survivability to where you can sustain through that Akali burst. But picking that BF sword and then looking for Ruby Crystal sort of hints to me a Spear of Sojin and a full investment in that side is too much of a glass cannon 
for me. So really, Tuki is pretty much disabled from this game for the next few minutes until they're able to hit that one item power spike. And one of the other itemizations that we're sort of keeping track of is Philson's Rakan mid, right? He is going fully. That is the Hextech Proto Belt. So I'm, I'm going to be interested to see how that one runs it through because, like, he has been playing very stable. And yes, Persuasion is, like, the strongest member on Lee's McRae's team. And he's actually up to par on that. I think so, yeah. It's actually been holding pretty pound for pound on this one. It's kind of one of the shining lights here. Take a look at the bottom lane. It's actually not as, as far down either. The deficit's really only on this top half of the map, particularly yeah. in the top lane, and then with the numbers as well. But bot lane is a little bit of maybe a kink in the armor here as well. They gotta find something quickly because so lucky's just been sitting down here, and that's not gonna slow down. Arrow is taken right out of that one. Another kill for Moonka. Yeah, and they smelled out Mike OG, who's getting pinched up here. I don't think he's getting out of this one. Doesn't look likely, right? Filsom's right there with the speed that he needs. The flash is there, but it just feels wasted. As Filsom picks that one up, maybe more to come on this one. Persuasion has the ultimate. I think he's out. Now, with the Iowa's kills bottom side, you can start to look towards another dragon, which will be up in about two minutes, but you do have the Rift Herald. As we mentioned, they did execute that plan properly after the situations that happened earlier at that eight minute mark. So with the Rift Herald, I still think double down on that top side of Disco Guy. Drop it down there when dragon is up and then make it to where no one can really assert on Disco Guy. And then it sort of scares everyone to get to that Rift Herald as soon as possible and shut it down, which gives you some breathing space on this dragon as well, which will be an ocean drag, which, hey, if you steal that away, it's even better. Speaking of so lucky. Ooh, yeah, time to get in some real trouble here again. So lucky. Just pitching a tent and camping Ouch. this bottom lane. Absolutely disgusting. They're like, he's playing so well. Like, so lucky. This is his game. And he's just been running wild with his window jungle. Very different from uh, the most previous window jungle that I saw from ASUB. This is a very different story, and it just shows you how volatile this pick can be. And actually deciding to jump off the uh, window. Yeah, they want yeah, to use it just to create a quick little dive, clear the camps, and then so lucky walks right out. He doesn't know that the W is here. He doesn't care. Jinx Rocket misses. Yeah. They're going to get the plays, what they can pick up off of this. It's just beautiful. It's, it's crazy, because I don't even think Arrow should have died there either. He should have understood exactly that you have to forfeit that turret. There's no way you're going to be alive to just try and make some sort of rebuttal. Same with Mike OG. I, you shouldn't be here. Mm. Oh no, yeah, this is bad. Leona ult is down. That says goodbye. And Mike the OG taken right out for his third death. Ooh. This is just like, it is a stacking of Barton playing exemplary to their composition right now, finding proper picks, using the laning strength of Akali to just tear through this Shivana with no problems. Speaking of which, we'll just go ahead and do it once more. Oh yeah, you want problems, you got problems. Goodbye, Disco Guy. Would have healed through the yeah. tower shot anyway, but times it extra well. Yeah, so you have that super strength of Akali in this top side. You have the engagement of Golden Lotus to help with the follow-up from So Lucky's Mundo. So you're playing your composition properly. And on the other side as well, a lot of your advantages have come from sort of, I, I wouldn't say Lee's McRae is underestimating their opponent, but it was something where they tripped on their themselves through the draft. Like, picking Shivana into an Akali matchup seemed ambitious. It was something that you would see in, like, a game two when you're, like, one, one win. But throwing it out in game one of a best of three series is very, very risky, and it's a high gamble for success. And now you're sitting at a 0 and 10 kill differential, 7,000 gold difference, and Persuasion can't even deal with, like, the weakest member on Barton's team, which in itself, like, Ari being the burst mage that she is, decided to go Glacial Augment, which is very much investing into Tommy Gun on that bottom side, who has been, like, sort of starved out of uh, actual any advantage. Does definitely feel bad. He's the one unblemished player here on the side of Lee and McRae. He doesn't have a death to his name yet, where everyone else on his team has multiples. Trying to hold this one out, but it's just going to get tougher with Golden Lotus being this Leona here, able to just kind of lock down anyone and everyone at a moment's notice here. The ult's already back off cooldown. Relatively short compared to ult's, CC's, four supports. You really got to think, 
what are the options now for Lee's McCray? Because the team fight does not feel good for them if Disco Guy can get involved at any point. And meanwhile, the Blazer Fisher does come down. They want to find this one, but there's the paranoia coming in on the side. My POG is hurt up, and Old Shinug against the field behind the tower comes the Leona Pop. But can they get out of this one? Tuki is exhausted. He's low. He's back under his tower. He will get sniped for the double kill. Do they keep this one up? Persuasion says yes, and there's his first death. Triple down thus far. Curtain call. Do they find anything more on the Tommy gun? They're trying so lucky, just flashing out, and that should be the end of it. And this is where, in this state of a game where you're 13 kills up, encroaching on that 10,000 gold lead, and in the sort of manner that both of these teams sort of represent and statue themselves, being these young organizations, I like to play a game sort of called the ego check, right? Where you are so far ahead of the other team that you can pretty much just like run it down and literally just run over them and just go to the nexus with no questions asked. Like they are literally just speed bumps to you. So this is where the ego check comes in, right? Is like how much are you just underestimating the possibility for these teams to come back and if you start to actually trip up because of that. So far, Barton has not really been doing that. They've been managing that turret properly. They like We saw that last turret dive. They were trying to make sure that they were out of the turret range while they were in that fight hit, so they could just optimize their damage without taking any unnecessary offenses from the turrets of uh, Lee's with Prey. So at this point, they understand that they still need to take it slow. They're not at the point where they can literally just run through the defenses of Lee's McCray and just get out with no no problems or no handicaps. So for them, all is the usual. Make sure that you respect who you're up against, that they can have the potential to come back at any moment. And if you find someone overstepping their boundaries, just put them back in their place. That's what they're doing pretty well. And I like that you mentioned turrets in that last kind of chain of thought because it brings up an interesting point. Barton's almost 10k gold up with only the outer ring of turrets down thus far. Yeah. That's just a huge one that's only going to stack as more turrets do fall, but in the meanwhile, we might see more champions falling as Arrow is here. The fight's breaking down. Leona does pop the ultimate to hold that one together. So lucky may just be on the way out of this one. Golden Lotus doesn't look like he wants to get back into the engage, so could see them just trying to buy time. We do have the Akali top side of the towers. They know it's more important. And if they can keep this one on pace, the split push could really come alive. Oh, the split push has been online for like the past 10 minutes now. Ever since that play in the top lane where Akali was able to get that 2v1 and then the kill as well in the bottom side to just open up the entire map for like, for so lucky to just have his run with and have absolute freedom wherever he is. It's just been amazing for Barton and there is also the potential that they could play this game and have a perfect record. Zero kills given over. Zero turrets, zero objectives taken away from under their noses. If they're able to do that, I would need to check back in the record books, but I think it would be the first perfect game that we've had this season. It would be insane. Yeah, the least one, the ones that we've seen on stream here, yes, because yeah. we've seen pretty one-sided games throughout, but they've always been punished in one regard or another, just never in a complete sense punished back. It's always been, okay, well, yeah, we were able to you know, keep it close in kills, but obviously they got all the objectives. Or, hey, it was an objective fight, but they outslayed us like crazy yeah. this time. Yeah, on track for that perfect game, knock on some wood here to we'll see if they can get it. We've also seen nothing but two zeros on stream, right? We'll see now at this point if... This game goes the way you think it does, and Barton's able to close out, which may, may be first kill coming back here for Lisa McCray. Can Disco Guy get out? The flash is there. Oh my yes, god. Back in on this. You're kidding me. Filson's there. Tuki's the down. This is insanity. The double kill already. Disco Guy will fall finally, but at what cost? Well, three back thus far, maybe more. If Tommy Gun does not get out of this one, okay. That's going to be the Zenith play. The flash out means that this one is stopped. But 16 right. to 1 is the final score on that. Alrighty. Okay, Disco Guy, you just gave up a perfect game for Barton, man. Mm. Come on. Yeah, yeah, we did lose that. <laughs> That's a bummer. Right hey. as we knock on wood, right? Cast your curse. We did this. This is yeah, us. I mentioned it. I didn't want to bring the curse, but every single time, like, you have to mention it. It's like a possible ability for a perfect game. No worries. It's 21 minutes. Let's take the Baron. There's no way that leaves me great to contest them at this point. Vision control is out of this world. 
for Barton. So, so if they see anyone decide to just, like stick their nose into the jungle, they will see these McRae do so. And now with the teleport from Disco Guy to help continue that pressure in the top end, I'm expecting, even though it is a slow, it's a slow Baron for sure. They do not have the best <laughs> objective taking composition with a Jin or Khan and without a call even there. So for them, okay, let's just keep running it through. Ooh, speaking of getting run through, that's going to be Arrow getting run straight through the heart. Hooked right back down into this one. Tuki now with the bear means no way he's holding this one. They just want the dive, so Lucky is there. And who's going to get it? Of course, it's going to be the Rakan picking that one up. Some at the end of the day, another tower down. And this could just be everything. I think they're going to march right on through and take yeah. it. If they're not getting Nexus Towers here, this is a failed push, right? Yeah, I would say it's a failed push. If you're not able to get at least one Nexus turn, then you have a problem coming for you. But even then, like, you look at now what Lee's McRae has. You have an Infinity Edge on Jinx compared to the Infinity Edge Rapid Fire Cannon. And what's looking like an Essence Reaver up in the next few minutes. He has 830 gold in his pocket, so Ulshi Nugget is just going to go back, probably grab the Caulfield's Warhammer. There you go. And then just run it through this mid lane as a battering ram. Clump up, grab what you have in your jungle. You have the red buff available. I actually wouldn't put it on Ulshi Nugget because Jin's not like the best optimizer for red buffs. I would either just give it to So Lucky, where he has that consistent slow with his auto attacks and his cleaver throws, or put it on the Disco Guy for the same effect, right? Because the the four shot with fixed uh, fixed attack speed isn't going to like double down on the burn or anything. It doesn't have any bonus effects because of that. So just keep it through, have any questions. But you know, they just ignored the red buff entirely anyway. So my point's completely moved. They're just going to try and see if they can grab my it's such a luxury at this point. I mean, they're already 12k gold in the lead. They're not just in the driver's seat. They're in a completely different vehicle at this point. Just absolutely storming past their opponents. So, what kind of vehicle is it? You know what? This is this is a six speed. Whatever it is. I mean, we're only at 23 minutes right here, and this thing is fast. I'm not the biggest yeah. car guy in the world, but I do know that the engines are absolutely roaring, and so are the kills as Disco Guy comes in onto Arrow. That's another one picked up by OG Nugget. Mike DLG just running back to base, but he's not going to get there. Persuasion, Tommy Gun. These guys are the damage, but there's nothing they can do. Frontline eviscerated, backline eviscerated, Lee's McCray eviscerated, and now the base is all that stands in the way of Barton picking up game number one. Oh my goodness. I may not be a German engineer, Corvus, but Barton is playing like an Audi TT with an inline 5 supercharged, just bursting through Lise McRae, absolutely destroying them and doing it soundly. But let me tell you, go on YouTube, look up an inline 5 Audi TT engine, it sounds amazing. And that's what Barton just did to me right there. Oh man, they finished that one up 16. K gold in the lead. Two towers were lost in addition to the one kill. So not perfect game, right? So, so not a perfect slight, game. Yeah. Slight moral victory there for Lise McRae at the end of the day. But holy cow, what a bashing we just saw come down from the side of Barton and the Bobcats. Yeah, and for the side of Barton, you have a massive ego boost right now. You just absolutely decimated game one. You're feeling really good. You're a collie on the top side of Disco Guy. He's probably like, give that to me again. I will just run wild with this. And I'm going to put on the true damage Akali skin as well because, you know, spend the money, make yourself look fly, all that style. And for Lee's McRae, then it comes to a question of like, how hard did that loss get to you? Is it really underneath your skin? Is it digging into you? Or did you just shrug it off, water off a duck's back? How have no issues and just come into the next game with some base knowledge saying look these are the ways we need to improve our drafting performance this is what we need to ban next game this is what we need to focus on what composition are we going to cook up to try and make this game our own and then push it to a three game series i think it's got to be built around tommy gun whatever the answer is here we saw the solo lanes Top especially, really get hammered in. Persuasion did hold his own, I think, just until the very end of that game against Phil. Somebody wasn't really able to shut him down there either. And then, of yeah. course, the bot lane was just running wild there for Barton. Of course, Tommy Gunn, you know, had one of the better records on his team, had very competitive CS, second actually only to Disco Guy throughout this game and was a shining light for his team in, in really all aspects, gold and damage and, you know, what he was able to do relevancy wise, I'd like to see now the side of Lee's McRae maybe try to focus on him just a little bit more. And I think that starts with Mike the OG. 
I think that yeah. starts particularly playing around the bottom lane to the degree that so lucky was, right? They identified the problem in Lee's McRae for the side of Barton. They knew, okay, mm-hmm. Tommy Gunn's going to be the threat here. And they just sat on his lane for like six and a half years. I mean, that was absolutely the play and it worked fantastically. The good news is it's simple enough on paper that, hey, maybe you can cook up an answer to it here. Well, of course we will see. We got to give these teams some time to discuss it as we have discussed it and, you know, formulate a plan for themselves here. Barton, obviously not wanting to go easy on them at this point. Keep the foot on the accelerator. So we'll give them a little bit of time. When we come back, we'll have game number two ready to rock and roll.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for sticking with us through the break there. We are now on the cusp of game number two, Barton College versus Lise McRae, who, well, they got to figure out something and quick. Oh, definitely. And we, we, and in sort of a comparison, myself, were sort of mentioning that the way Barton played was almost mechanical, that it was like this German engineering style, right? That they just were able to play in a very efficient manner. They did exactly what they needed to do in the draft and they executed exactly as their composition was supposed to. So very nice, very precise, but you know, even with the precision that they had, they weren't really able to get to a perfect game. They were very close. They only lost one turret. And I think it was also just two lives and end score was 17. I think actually it was 18 two. So you're looking at that and it's like, okay, how do we even hold a candle to this and really run it home and possibly have like a perfect game for this, like to close out the series? You'd like and Lisa McCray is on the opposite side. They're like, what do we do? Yep. Yep. Play around that bot side. Pick a safe top laner. Those are, I think, the most basic pieces of advice I can give. Just Yeah. Yeah. I, um, if you're to pick two obvious things, right? So, so there's. Uh, okay. If there's, it was there's if a I philosophy was that I right. love, there's a philosophy that I love that says do the next right thing, right? You don't have to worry about figuring it all out at once. Just do the next right thing, right? Like those are those are some pretty obvious next right things. Yeah, but the thing is, is I'm a lefty and I naturally don't think that way. So for me, it's how do I do something that throws the other team off to where they don't even expect it, right? So Timo that's jungle. the that's the question that yeah, Timo Jungle. <laughs> I've seen it. I literally. It was it was part of a tournament that I was watching this weekend. Someone played Teemo Jungle. They didn't all Yordles come. It was disgusting. But apparently we just got word that Pro Draft is bugged out, so we're going to have to remake that one. No and it'll give us a little bit more time because I did want to actually sort of role play as Lise McRae, right? Because okay. you, are, you are 10 feet in the ground right now. You are super far in. You're in the trenches. You don't know your like your boots are wet. It's all muddied up. How do you dig yourself out of this hole that you put yourself in, especially with the performance that you had just last time? And dissecting that last game, you are definitely not giving Disco Guy a callie back. Definitely, no. that's a hundred percent definitive. But the majority of it was more of like the awkward style of top lane, and then Mike OG in that jungle. Those were the two massive hiccups that they, excuse me, that they had. So. For me, pick a comfortable top lane that is able to convert into the mid game without having like without having the actual result or possibility to get massively out punished. So yes, you can give Disco Guy a carry champion, say like a Fiora or a Camille. You can give those away. Heck, even a Kled. Like you can let them have Kled, but you give yourself a top lane investment like a tank where it's possibly an Orn in the top lane, a Malphite in the top lane who has made a resurgence in uh, like this new sort of preseason into season 10. Mm -hmm. So find something that has some stability there, fully invest, like you said, with Tommy Gun in that bottom lane. And that's where Mike OG's job comes in of saying, I need to sort of mirror what so, so Lucky did in that last game and really get some sort of presence in this the bottom side the nocturne pick was proper but you need something more ambitious something that has more early game presence lee sin jarvin the fourth heck even echo even though echo is a late game investment he still has that potential to gank in the early stages so that's where i'm looking at for lee's mccray to try and innovate and sort of normalize their composition Echo actually banned out by Lee's McRae in Ooh. the last game, first phase, along with the side of Nami and Sona. Now, this time, they banned three-fifths of the composition that just steamrolled them. And they're talking about picking away, perhaps, maybe another. But hovering the Yorick here, I actually like okay. that very much. Interesting pick up here, but should go hmm. over, I think, a little better in that top side. Um, I'm hopeful. The Jin pickup obviously wasn't broke. Don't fix it for Barton there and Warwick as well. Something I'm going to be very interested to see play out in this job. I, I like the Yorick, even though it doesn't go directly with what I'm sort of recommending for Lee's McRae. The Yorick is still good because it gives you a definitive strategy in saying mm -hmm. we are going to have a split pusher and we are going to make sure that he is going to be in his own lane. He has the potential to have that 
security with the Warwick in the jungle. And a lot of people underestimate the power that Warwicks bring in that position. The fact that if you have a trade that goes a little bit indecent and you drop below that uh, sort of health threshold, he can be in your lane at a moment's notice because of how that blood hunt works. He can run straight at you, have no problems getting on you because of how his kit works. And even if you flash away, the jaws of the hunt goes with you on that. And people people tend to forget that mechanic because he can stick on the back lines fairly easily with the way that his kit is opened up to. So it gives this split push capability with a very strong and roaming jungler. And then the luck sort of cleans it out to where they're like, now we have wave management in that mid lane to make sure that that york can always stay in that side lane and barton has to answer us directly as this 4-1 style i feel like the only like the, the good turn back to that that we will be seeing i'm expecting this kale to go onto the top side for disco guy here true he played phenomenally well once he gets into the stage of the game where he can just drop ult on somebody it's gonna be uh obviously the mid or the the so, uh, ad i'm sorry here uh, if the Warwick's targeting correctly, that mm -hmm. should have a good chance to negate some of that. Obviously, they do have to play around some of these dangers, but I like the long-range composition already that Barton is building for themselves. Hey, Warwick's not going to be a problem if he can never reach us. Lux, a fantastic addition there, but now as we're getting back into the other side of bands, it's some of this more long-range and supportive that's getting taken off here. The Varus is going to be not an option, thanks to the likes of Barton College, the Nami, the Thresh as well, tanked out in the support area there. And so now they just know they don't want to see Kane from Lee's McRae. The rest on the jungle, hey, it's okay. We, we do what we do there. Yeah. So at this point, you have massive wave management in the mid lane between Zareth and Lux. Lux has a little bit more of that side wave clear pressure, as I mentioned earlier, where Zareth has that just artillery factor of sieging. If you're able to get ahead, you can constantly push in. And even if you fall behind, you'll always be able to clear out that wave specifically. So even though it doesn't have an amazing uh, mid game. The early game and late game for Zareth is still going to be very manageable. Misfortune being locked in sort of gives me a question mark of, is this going to be that attack speed misfortune that we see with press the attack? Or is this going to be that lethality style where it's more of that supportive backline, making sure that there's always going to be that zone pressure. But when you look at the composition that they've built up, you need that press the attack, Miss Warchin, because you do not actually have a directive front line for this 4-1 split push composition that you're making. So you need someone that can peel for themselves, tear through individuals as fast as possible, because you will not have a Mundo in front of you. You're only going to have that Warwick, and Warwicks still can be fairly squishy once that damage reduction from their Howl is offline. That's been mirrored pretty effectively, though, by the likes of Barton. They do have Really just the Jarvan as what's going to be their main source of getting beat up on in the front line. Zerath Jin, they want to stay back. Rakan, yes, he goes in, but then, you know, hit that's his shit. He goes right back out. And then yep. Kale is going to kind of flit along the sidelines, but it's nothing that can't be caught almost immediately by any number of these champions on the side of Lise McRae. So I feel like Lise McRae have drafted very well if they can play around the Jarvan. Obviously, we did see quite the jungle presence coming out from So Lucky last time. So yeah. some question marks around that and how he's going to be able to, I think, particularly play that one to make it, a, I think, a, a taller order. Oh, definitely. So it's like you already have a very visible split push composition of Lee's McCray and Barton College, who is more of that team fight style. So you have very visible goals and very visible win conditions. The weaknesses are, as well are just as sort of shined upon because when you get into the laning phase with barton this bottom lane is actually fairly weak Jin has strong dueling potential if he's able to trade around his fourth shot properly and they're able to sort of portray that all she nugget was able to do that fairly well especially with the attention that he got from so lucky in that bottom side but this time around you're dealing with a pike and a misfortune who will have a little bit more offensive pressure against you to where brahm in the last game was a little bit more passive played defensively wasn't as confident in trying to trade with you so that's where Jin starts to have issues is when he is getting pushed against he doesn't really have that many actual tools to answer a offensive move where all of his aggression could actually bite for him in the in the long term definitely something that needs to be considered there yeah Oshi nugget was such an asset to his team in the last game on that gin just playing it very well kind of behind the lines of his composition where it naturally fit in this mm. time it, it could be a little bit trickier to try to stick here and we'll see if that is the case and oh 
Okay, now hang on. Are they really about to do this? Because we're we're watching the actual. Is there going to be zero support? Draft. That's so. So we're, we're watching the draft. And Bill, so maybe saying anything you can do, I can do better. As he takes the recon to the mid lane, barring any kind of crazy swap here, which I don't think would be the case, because the reason you pro draft is so that players don't have to swap around and oh hey I don't own this champion type deal obviously so I'm guessing for now that Filsom is going to be running this recon in the mid lane and That's I, a, okay and this, that would be zero support if that does come down now yes obviously a swap would make more sense this would be all pride coming down I mean this would be like hey look I saw and, and, and maybe a little disrespect as well hey look you played the recon mid didn't work out for you let me show you how it's done right no the it's, recon it's, mid one this is going to be Filsom's second game of recon mid was it? Oh, you're right. Yeah. Okay, I'm so sorry. You are absolutely right. I was confused. I was flipped on that one. Side swap. Got yeah, I'm just, I'm just as tilted as seeing Recon mid. It makes no yep. sense. <laughs> yep, yep. He's, he's running it again. <laughs> Completely crazy. Wow, they've tripped us up here. So, yeah, no, Barton College. Uh, anyone maybe watching, scouting them out here? You know, Recon's probably not the sport. Yeah. I mean, you're at the support, which is... Uh, hey, I wouldn't even... The range and lane. I wouldn't even ban it, though. That's the thing. Like, you don't expect a Recon mid because of just the power trough that it gets into it's like a cliff like his early game is good because of the base damage that he has and the engagement and then after that he's just an engagement tool he actually doesn't really do any damage once he gets to like level 12 13 even with the items that you will be grabbing like a lost chapter into a Luden's echo or like like he went with the hextech proto belt first even that like you have burst damage into that mid game but then if you're able to survive those 12 to 18 minute like window where his damage is threatening after that, like he's just that engagement tool and you just need to space properly. Like It's just another recon support, which in turn brings me to another big concern. You now have a very immobile bot lane of Olshi Nugget and uh, Gyozo, Gyozo-sama excuse me, on that yeah. Jin Zerith bot lane against a pike who will be constantly throwing out those hooks and those spears to just take you out as fast as possible in Misfortune. We'll see how the runes are with her and what she decides to go with because that could determine very much how life-threatening that bottom lane could be so i do want to zero in on something here that uh i i personally missed until about 45 seconds ago uh we do have a substitute coming out here now for the side of barton college just getting everybody all the uh the experience they want uh support player golden lotus out of the game not here anymore it is going to be gyoza sama coming in on the support for the zerath here so completely yeah. legal substitution this is absolutely allowed between games I don't know if it's just they want to get them the experience or they saw something in the matchup they didn't like as much, but at this point they are opting to swap someone in for the likes of Barton Collins. So that's going to be somebody I'm very interested to see how they do play and perform as the game does unfold. Mm -hmm. Before the game unfolds, of course, we are getting into our lovely three minute delay, which means it's time again to thank our sponsors, the wonderful GameStop, GameStop.com slash esports to find out all the more. We'll tell you more about that one after this game, of course. But as we do take into the three minute delay, we got something to buy a little time. It's the highlight reel from week number one. All the fun of the first games. Ready to rock and roll your way. New level of aggression for the guy so far in these first six minutes. Trying to take the infernal pick by himself. Maybe going to get sniffed out here. Yes, will indeed be spotted. Now it's just a matter of if he goes over the wall. That's the flash. And no, even with the consumes, Mike, not going to be able to get it. That one is picked up by Destin. He may get returned back on for this one, but Kale is there in just enough time. Randy now in a little bit of trouble as the teleport comes down. Barmethian gets that one. Tomlin trying to get in the party in the fight as Chia is cute as here. Now we got a lot of action going down as everyone's here in the river. 9,000 Asians doing what he can, but look at that. Peanuts got the. County and great kills being picked up. One for Destin on the Olaf, the other by Methian on the Kale. Beautifully done. And on top of that, Isis of Lee decided to pay the Sorok attacks early. He's getting the Executioner's Calling so that healing reduction is down even further. But Verithian is yeah. in trouble. Maybe has to pop the ult to defend himself, but Renny is there channeling his own ultimate. And just like that, 9,000 Asians 
little aggressive on this one, and what a turnaround. Coming from Bard, I don't think he'll even have time to teleport. Wants to actually get it behind them. He's coming in, getting ready to go. 9,000 Asians with a good engage so far, but it's only on the problem. They've got the real damage now. Destin is God, like killing him back now. 9,000 Asians in some real trouble as he's going so hard for this. And Chia in the back line, he was trying to get the flank, but now he may just be in trouble. LaFossa down too. And that one's picked up by Tomlin. It is now 20 to 13. The double kill, the ace, the tower now. Certainly not long for this world as UNBC just cleans house. Much efforts. This could be dangerous. Maybe a fight potentially brewing as the chase is happening on in suppression coming out. This could be huge as now Barmithian in some real trouble. Destin keeping him off him, but now going to be pinched as the teleport does come out for Rennie. She is cute here as well, trying to get more out of this one. Young Peanut, can he get in onto it? It seems like they almost don't want to, but they're continuing to keep up this pressure. 9,000 Asians just barely rocked, and Destin gets it beautifully at the just edge of his flash to take a kill out. And the mid laner now gets some real dragon priority. University of Maryland, Baltimore County. We've got a 5v5 cooking as the call of the Forge God does come down. Young Pina taking out. She is cute. The first one to get in onto the scene there, but Renny is down. The boss. Next one to go. Destin so strong, and look at this. They are just tearing through now as UNBC is on triple kill for Barbie, and he wants more as 9,000 Asians gonna get stunned up the combo just waiting to reset on the cooldowns the blue buff gonna help him but no look at oh. the turnaround baited oh, perfectly as 9000 asians takes the kill away but it's just a consolation prize as they do lose the fight overall they do lose the dragon and that's gonna be a huge one no destin <laughs> perfectly timed to pull literally the ace out of the hole very last second well done to the jungler of umbc just baby buying time here as Young Peanut's trying to get this bottom lane inhibitor for himself sneakily. It's up to the rest of his team to buy time on that one. They're looking to make it happen in the mid lane, but look at that. The Call of the Forge God does come down. It is whipped. Barmithian, a very aggressive early pop on that Zanya's means. He's taken yep, right out of this one, and they find him early yet again. Can they get the damage back? 9,000 Asians does go down, so both mid laners are out of contention at this point, but Rennie is taken down on the back line. Tomlin, very low, Ooh. has to be careful. Frog almost certainly going to die, but not if Destin has anything to say about it. Pretty big pickup. Yeah, interesting. Flash Force, not heal though. And also as a little bit of a note that you should bring up is that it is Dark Harvest on that Jin, So not going to be as sustainable as he was last time. He did go Fleet Footwork last uh, game. So for me, it's, it's showing a little bit of that ego check leaking through into this second matchup of this best of three series is that now you're looking, you're starting to experiment you're getting yourself a little bit on a pedestal over your opponent. And that's really when a lot of these teams start to slip up because you don't put the opponent on a respectable platform. You don't think that they're going to pull off any like sort of surprising moves like we just saw in that level one where they were able to get. One of the more gangster moments of all time, Birdman like walking to in. Take you down. Ooh. Ooh, indeed. Yeah, Pike just missing it on the edge there. You talk about that respect. We had one of the more gangster moments of all time when Birdman walked into the studio and said, put some respect on my name, right? That is maybe what Barton's coming in doing a little too heavily here, right? You got to make sure that that one is held together okay. And Yeah. Tough situation here. They cannot get too confident. We do have the mid lane going very well already for Filsom into this one. The Lux for Persuasion. I like the range to deal with this a little bit more, but if you wasn't able to convert it with the Ari, you do have your questions on the Lux as well. He's going to be somebody I'm 
looking at a little bit more, I, I guess under further scrutinization, this game in particular. Now, so lucky. Also somebody that tipped the scales very early. That's another question mark for me, I think, here. Yeah. And so far, this changeup between Gyozo-sama and uh, into this series is sort of like just like, a, I think it's just a play style because like we had Leona last game and then this time around having Xerath very different. You go from in full engagement to just poke. So it sort of explains the swap up a little bit more, but so lucky actually decided to invest on Disco Guy this time around as well. Flag and drag does come down. Tuki, can you get out of this one? The Yorick, not great if he shut down early. Mike, though, in time to come in. The OG Tuki thought maybe this was something it wasn't, and the flag just impales him on the way out. First blood is so lucky. Yeah, I think he was expecting Mike the OG to sort of really invest on trying to find a kill, so he went back in, but fortunately it cost him his life, and going over to so lucky, not the worst situation, because now you don't have to deal with a Kale that has that massive 400 gold differential against you and can get to her power spike faster. But it does mean you are pushed up against your turret. You have to forfeit this lane now. And you really can't find anything until, well, speaking of which, Mike OG comes in to say hi. Definitely want to come in here. There's the flea down disco guy. I try to get this one right, but just not on the same page. First it was Tuki that wanted it all in. Then it was Mike OG. But your ships passed in the night on that particular series of attempted gank and counter gank play didn't work out for him this time and they have a pretty good read on the fact that mike the og is still on this top side that's gonna give i think so lucky a lot of wiggle room if he wants to start trying to oppress this bottom lane the good news for him is that you know his laners are kind of doing it themselves at this point olshi nugget doesn't really need any help trying to get too far ahead his cs is massively down to tommy gun but they have them so hard pressed under tower that they know they're not really in any danger of, of getting slain out here yeah, this is another map where So Lucky can pretty much do whatever he wants. And Tommy Gun actually taking some damage, forced to flash as well, Ooh. which means with the information being relayed, So Lucky might as well keep his eyes set on this bottom side, especially if Aeroburp tries to overstep any values, knowing that his ADC is down a summoner spell. And on this point, if I'm on the side of Barton, you have massive vision control already in this bottom end. See if you can go ahead, clear it out. Possibly try and take a peek against Mike OG because at this point, So Lucky's Jarvan will definitely outburst the Warwick. He will, will never be able to like out sustain him just because of how Warwick is with his kit. But it means that you will have just like that awkward sort of presence saying like, "Hey, I have a kill. You can't fight me." And if Mike OG respects that, that means you can just walk into his jungle and just take what you want. Wow, that seems to be the oh, play here. Go. Tuki's walking right on into the face of Disco Guy and maybe going to pick this one up. Does so very well Jeez. and gets a solo kill in the lane that was just oppressive to him last game. So, well, don't call it a renaissance comeback just yet, but Tuki definitely looking better in this lane on this York pick. Yeah, now that So Lucky isn't in that lane suppressing him, he can actually really look for that dual advantage that the York does have. And to which we do have a dragon fight. They want it, they're gonna get it. The flag and drag finds two, but is it enough on the backside going so hard? Means his own health bar is hurt. Tommy Gun picks up Olshi Nugget, and holy cow, who is this Lee's McCray? Their early game is so much cleaner. So much cleaner indeed, and now with the Tuki having that advantage in the top side, getting that kill, also believe he got a turret plate on his belt as well, and taking that Ocean Drake to boot just completely flips this game on its head. You expect Barton to do something a little bit more advantageous and you think that they actually wouldn't have taken that dragon because they didn't know where Mike OG was they didn't have really any lane priority sure Persuasion was gone and had recalled but he was already walking back to the lane he was within range of the fight for his ultimate so you'd already made an improper call to that situation to collapse onto that objective and now with the top side starting to struggle a little bit you have that recurve bow to the sheen and it's it's the stage where Yorick will be able to beat up Kale until Kale is able to get, say, one or two items. Um, more specifically, I think the Triforce or the Blade of the Rune King, whichever Disco guy goes for, can help determine this split pushing scenario between these two, while everyone else now with a kill onto Tommy Gun, who we Ooh. really haven't been touching on too much, decided to go Klepto on Misfortune. Yeah, okay. Hey, look, you know what? Gold. It's a, it's a big part of this, you know, items, you need them. Yeah. So, I like the mentality here. 
Meanwhile, Tuki trying to dig himself out of a little bit of a hole here in this top lane. This is Disco Guy picking it back up very aggressively now that he's in a post-level 6 world here and able to really start shoving this one in. We do have both junglers on this top side of the map, but Tuki wants to go back in for this one, wants to go right back out, feeling a little harsh about the way that did come down. Disco Guy not done yet. He does have ultimate if he wants to die. Mike BOG is in the area, but meanwhile in the mid lane, Persuasion is getting Cataclysm right on. The charm does come down. The barrier is there, but the tower, no help at all as Filson picks up the kill. Now, yeah, well done there by Still Lucky and Filson. That's the engagement that you are scared of. Like we said, the fact that with the quickening, Rakan can just jump onto you at a moment's notice. And at this stage of the game, early to mid game, base damage is just still so strong for Rakan. So you have to respect that. And sadly for Persuasion, even without the flash and barrier at your disposal, already baited out means you are easy pickings for so lucky. And now Mike OG seeing if he can make a move on the top side with his ultimate Ooh. at the ready. Just missing the ring to hold that one together is Tuki now, not trying to get oh, in no. too hard. Mike OG, though, going to get picked out on this one. Is able to dash pretty quickly, but the flag and drag is there. Cataclysm still down from the gank in the mid lane. Means nothing too crazy going to happen here just yet. So there's still a K down, but I do like what I've been seeing out of Lee's McCray thus far. They have all their turret plates up at this point still. More than you could say for them at nine minutes last game. Tuki... Finding the solo kill on the top side as well went well for him. Now he's finding a little bit more of a deficit there as Disco Guy is really coming into his own with the recurve blade here and playing to the range of that champion. So you're looking at the possible places. Bot lane arrow not connecting with that hook. Maybe could have tried to pick this one, find another advantage. Something that Lee's McCray has to get on pretty quickly. Yeah, and in this bottom side, you see Arrowburf just constantly trying to throw out these spears and trying to catch one of these members of Olshi Nugget or Gyozo Sama just to see if they can find any actual beneficial trade. And sadly, Gyozo and Olshi have been really managing themselves properly and keeping it at a, I'd say like a poke advantage, even though they're getting pushed in fairly hard from the way that Misfortune works. And of course, with the Ocean Drake as well, it gives them a little bit more lane sustainability and an overall presence at this stage. And now, Thinking at how Disco Guy might be able to take this lane back. We already have another fight going in on this bottom lane. They want to get more out of this one. Nugget's in some trouble. That's going to be Tommy Gun, though, hit by the flag and dragon. This could just turn the tide. The misfortune strong, but not strong enough. Arrow wanted the execute, but couldn't get it. Olshi Nugget should have another one right here in his pocket. And beautiful job by Olshi Nugget as well with the flash heal. Quickly getting away from uh, the X marks the spot from uh, our boy Pike on Arrow Burp. And so being able to lose that fight here, Olshi Nugget actually, actually really won that for his bottom lane because of the fact that he didn't die and give a kill back over to the bottom side of Lee's McCray. So now Tuki and Disco Guy still again trading it out. This is such a close tr like battle between these two and it's not really a spaghetti fight, it's just straight up whoever actually hits each other harder into a point of actual like forfeit of the lane and they're at that stage where either of them could really give it over luckily for disco guy i still give him the advantage because he hasn't actually used his ultimate just yet and that's really the turning point that's why tuki can't just all in on him just yet because he knows that that ultimate is still available has to find a way to force it and it's going to be through a gank i believe before he's going to be able to do that in a world where the trade goes in his favor I almost oh, might like to go. see an emphasis. Ooh, hang on. Yeah, they want to get it. Disco guy, it's the all-in. The ult does oh. come down, but no damage turned back, and Tuki finds it beautifully done to pick himself up. Yet another one in this lane. Feeling really great about that. And keep in mind, I do believe that the Kale was picked in response to the Yorick. Yorick was shown first here. So this is a matchup that Disco guy opted into. Yeah, so far, with the Cloud Drake being taken here, shows the actual jungle presence that Mike the OG I actually sort of being granted because it's just those slight advantages that his laners are actually giving him. You have Tuki being able to win that trade in the top side, which means there's a forced teleport from Disco Guy's Kale. And then the fact that Tommy Gun and Arrow Burp were able to find a pick just moments ago means that they were able to go ahead and get that dragon. So this time, even though Mike the OG is still struggling, the lanes are just performing just a little bit better than the previous game that allows Lee's McCray to actually have some sort of grasp into the second game. And you know what? Struggling, I think, is a relative term here for Mike the OG because at this point last game, he already had three deaths. 
right? Yeah. So, you know, being zero, zero, and one is, if that's struggling, it's it's far less than whatever was happening to him last game. This Warwick is definitely a better pickup. It's staying relevant in, you know, the kill death discussion, the gold discussion. Well, he's about a thousand behind his counterpart jungler, and that is going to be felt pretty heavily. I mean, eight or nine hundred gold there to, to the difference, so not feeling particularly good, but with the Tiamat, with the jungle item almost finished, you know, he's really not so far out of the conversation Ooh. just yet, like he was last game. Now, he was so far out. This is a far out attempt at Tommy Gun there, and Ulshi you Nugget know, just happens to find it. They want it in, and they got sent right back out inside of Lee's McCray. Maybe more to come in this top lane. Does flag and drag land? It does not, but Tuki's not exactly flash. in the best spot either. Yeah, gonna have to worry about getting over this wall, or maybe just call it Mike the OG and turn it back. Are you kidding me? Holy cow, Lee's McCray and Tuki in this top side. That was an amazing job there from the fact that Tuki was able to hold on just long enough. He does have the Trinity Force, so that power spike for Yorick is immense at this moment. And Mike the OG coming in at just the right time. And I was going to say that with the kill, one kill differential with the 1,000 gold that was down, it was like pretty much Mike the OG was the difference. But with that fight in the top side resulting in now an equalized gold differential and kill score as well, means that this game is once again back on a even setting even though you have Tuki on this four and one Yorick his split pushing is now online and this is where for me you fall into an awkward trap for these young organizations in a sense of saying hey our split pusher is the strongest member on the map right now and even though he is a split pusher and your whole goal is to use him in an off lane and just constantly apply pressure into like this mid lane or this bottom lane teams tend to fall into a trap that they nice use stuff. them as an actual team fighter and that's where i'm going to be growing a concern is now as we've seen through this bottom lane this trade Ooh, it might be forced. so close can they get on to arrow and the answer is no he does barely get out alive with that one well maybe hang on here is jarvin lingering off to the side we'll see meanwhile tuki the double buffs keeping a very strong split push in this top lane as so we're kind of back and forth all sides of the map drawing up Filsom here this has got to be mm -hmm. careful he does not have mike the og to help bail him out of this one but he is able to at least stall just a little bit and very well done you just got to give this guy so much praise right tuki went effectively from worst to first in a matter of minutes here so much oh, better now on this time and the rift herald gonna take this mid lane tower with unless they're able to put a huge plug in it very quickly nope well, they're gonna take it it's no problems with them but so now lee's mccray is still they have to sort of refine this strategy right now because i'm seeing a lot of holes that they have and the fact that tuki yes he's split pushing he's doing what he needs to be doing as the yorick but he's currently playing in the dark right now that is a that's a Barton control word right there on the blue buff. So yeah. they have security for Disco Guy to constantly look for aggression when Filsom comes to try and find a roam. He still has the quickening and the flash to jump onto Tuki. And Tuki's been getting a little bit lucky. And sure, yeah, you have two members in the top side. What is bottom side going to grab? They just got a turret. You're starting to slowly get to that 2,000 gold differential. You cannot die here. You have to retreat because that is a 3v3 comp right now in this bottom side and it might be 4v3 soon with persuasion now coming in just sort of hanging around by the blue yeah they want to get persuasion into this one fairly quickly and it's kind of a wasted opportunity okay you know you've got two in the top lane you see three in the bot lane mids free low at this point just free farm it right or get some jungle get some wards down really just unfortunate timing with persuasion having to run back all this way and not really get to be part of that oh hey it's free gold conversation here now only yeah just now catching back up to that. So we'll see if his team can kind of continue to put the pressure there. The good news is in the topic of pressure, Tuki's really been drawing two members to that top side almost always. Disco guy, I think it's fair to say he's completely afraid to be up there by himself at this point, right? Knows he could just get absolutely slammed out, especially now that, that big buys happen. But meanwhile, actually so lucky here. This could be big. They want to get more onto this one. That's going to be Filsom in some real trouble here. And now they're all trying to back right on off the dragon wall, getting it now. That's going to be huge. They're trying to get in. And Oshi Nugget is there in the meantime. Gaiosama gets Tommy Gun as well. That's a huge killing spree. Beautifully does yeah. Persuasion now gonna be knocked out of that one amazing play and the dragon oh, no. here oh this is bad for Tuki. he thought he could be the hero and he just can't at the end of the day shut on down 
And this should be the dragon. That's the ace coming through for Barton. They finally cleaned it up, picked it around. And just when you thought things were looking up for Lee's McCray, they were shot right back down. I was just about to mention before that fight that you cannot count out Barton just yet. Their composition is a team fighting composition. Though it may not be as traditional or as modern as you'd expect it, especially with the Rakan mid and a Xerath support, it is still a team fighting comp. They have a back line to shred through. They have a front line with the Rakan and the Jarvan to create this sort of chaos of a mid to short ranged field. And then, of course, even though Kale is sort of confined to this off lane right now to answer the Tuki push, Tuki decided to go there. And that was the trap that I was expecting for uh, Lee's McCray to fall into to where your strongest member is that split pusher and you have to you force them into a fight for an objective and your team is not able to hold even with the opponent and it just puts the split pusher in a place where they will suffer no matter what the result and gives a free turret over to the top side the first turret here for barton that one definitely stings if you are the side of lee's mccray just really getting absolutely blasted on the kill front that's gonna feel bad for them they know they still have the advantage in turrets though and CS is looking good in a couple places for them as well, so don't feel like they're going to be playing too scared here. Given it the Mountain Drake, yes, that does sting to a composition with a Jin, where it's like, hey, that's something that they kind of needed anyway to pick up this Siege. But if they just play control, play smart, there's really not a lot objective-wise that could be going against them. We already know how slowly Barton College would have to take the Baron if they even attempted it here, right? So plenty of time in the world here, but Tuki... A little disrespectfully here, maybe yeah. in trouble. Three trying to find him. The Cataclysm is flashed out of. But now Gai Osama, he's trying to get in for that one. Can he get this one down? Flashing in for the stun just connects cleanly. And the flag and drag is going to be all she wrote as Gyoza Osama picks that one up for himself. Proper call there from Barton. They know that Tuki was out and overextended. He should have not been there. They have the vision control as well in this top side. It is lit up like massively. I would say Christmas tree, which I just did, but I'm really not a seasonal kind of person. It is the season. It hasn't happened yet. I just, if I hear another Christmas like commercial before Thanksgiving, I'm just going to mute all of radio. So I'm, I'm sure I'm it saying. helps that, that, that or hurts rather that, that you know you're 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 over in California. I'm here in the deep South where it is bitterly cold. About Very 26, true. 26 degrees in Atlanta right now. North Carolina, worse for wear. We mentioned Lee's McRae. They're in Banner Elk. That's in the yeah. mountains. That's in the low yeah. team. It was like if it, was, if it was hot chocolate weather, I, I'd definitely be more in the season. But like California weather just does not attune to that, unfortunately. And uh, speaking of attunement, I just don't think that uh, Lee's McRae is actually on the right note right now with each other. Like Ooh. Tuki, he just needs to sit in the side lane, but he needs to have vision around himself. He needs to make sure that he is always granting pressure, but he isn't in a punishing state where the rest of the squad have to go into that opposite lane. They need to be where Tommy Gun is right now. Like you put Tuki in the top side to where he's always threatening, and then you just put the rest of the team down bot, because when you have four members bot just like pushing in massively, and they're like, hey, we're gonna take your bot inhibitor, you can't take Baron with that. And no. like, you don't have an objective taking composition either. Like you could literally have two members up here. Like you could have Perswasen and you could have Tuki just in his top side. Ooh. And they actually have three. They're going in for a three They want it. This is going to be really dangerous as Mike the OG somehow staying alive through this one. But is it enough? Vilsum is on the way out. Disco guys so far untouched and the double kill does go down to him. This is the long range support from Zira, baby. And that's going to mean Tuki and Persuasion right on out of that one. It's a two for one. So lucky. Did go down, but they were able to find Arrow and Mike on the back. And they had the numbers disadvantage. Barton was in a three-man versus four-man fight. And they came out on top with the power that Kale gives you with the survivability that her ultimate grants. And, of course, the massive burst damage that she is able to provide alongside with So Lucky's Jarvan. Even though falling did a massive amount of damage in that quick fight. And with the fact that I was just calling out you need to have Tuki in a side lane not as a team fighter they continue to fall into that bait and forcing Tommy Gun into this awkward side lane where yes you need to farm up your 20 CS up here Misfortune has the gold advantage actually in a sense of like current state she has a thousand gold differential Ooh. at the moment but at this point both of these members do not actually have a power spike that they can currently acquire so 
You are able to oh, catch up. Oh no. Uh, speaking of catching up, Tsuki's just gonna get ca caught out once again. Oh, beautiful. Four people with their hands in the pot on this one. Gyoza Sama, the only one not to pick up a little bit of credit for that one. And with such a high priority target dead, you gotta think they wanna turn their attention towards the Baron. Now we knew it was, it took a while with Olshi Nugget last time on this gin. They do have Disco yeah. Guy on the Kale this time, and maybe they could force something there. But I think they just want to get the fight under the right circumstances here, if at all possible. They have Cataclysm for so lucky. He can flash, flag, and drag, really get in onto some of these people. Needs to do it carefully, because so far they're really just stalling them out. Already half of the death timer for Tuki thus far, so I really like the ability to draw back and play safe here from Lee's McRae. They are kind of negating the fact that Tuki's mostly dead. Top lane was so pushed in that it, it doesn't matter. Disco Guy is really just chewing that back through, and they don't yeah. stand to lose any major objectives off this one with the teleport coming in. And they're contesting for the dragon this time around. There is still the teleport priority from Disco Guy, because now that that one was forced from Tuki, they can continue the split push in Kale, and here comes the fight once again. Ooh, they want it. Arrow's already down. Tommy Gun whipping the ult for the most part. That's a suppression on the So Lucky, but he's got the ability to stopwatch right out of that. Tommy Gun finds Spilsome, and the back line does hurt from Gyoza Sama, but just not enough. Support taken down from mid lane thus far. Credit leaves McRae on the fight. They're down in gold. But up in the circumstance here, can they find more? It's a nice stun over the wall. Blasco not there, just at the edge of the Lux binding. The stall up Disco guy. They want more. They've got it with the speed buff. Yeah. That's the shutdown. Old she nugget over the wall. The dragon is started, and it looks like this one's all going Lee's McCray. And I'm pretty sure it was Lee's McCray that actually started that dragon as well. You saw the E come in from Tuki Zioric and just make the wings of the dragon flap up, knock people back, gives you that minor amount of CC that you need for Mike the OG to jump in and take that kill. And with Disco Guy now being down, you have the priority to possibly contest with this Baron, but there They're is really still confident. vision. They will look to take it. Whew. They want it. This is very aggressive. This they know the cold. teleport's down. They don't even this have Tommy Gun there yet. This is not all members on this call. So we'll see if they can get there quickly. I don't think the side of Barton can even believe it because they are not moving with the priority that they need to towards this one that's already down to about 4K HP here before even members of Barton are starting to sniff it. This is crazy. They're going to get the Baron for Lee's McRae. Yeah, Barton was just not ready for that Baron contestion. They didn't expect them to run straight for it, but you know, hey, you gotta be innovative, you gotta be bold, and that's really what we asked from Lee's McRae to really, instead of continuing to do the right thing, they did the left thing and just went straight for something that Barton just did not expect. Hey, you know what? Keep them on their toes. The old quote, everyone has a plan till they get hit in the face. Oh, no! Oh, they get hit in the face. Arrow just flopped right out of that one. We don't care if you have Baron. We're the team taking towers, is what Barton says here. And they're going to take it right on back. Still a 2K gold advantage built off the back of the bloodshed. 16 to 8 scoreboard. And this is never something you want to see from a Pike support, that he has participated in more kills for Barton than he has participated for Lee's McRae. He's just been constantly getting picked out and has never really been a major factor. And really, it's just up for the fact that Tuki has really been bringing enough pressure. And I, I would say that Barton has made some trip-ups, but it is also the fact that Tommy Gun and Mike OG have been able to realize and sort of find when exactly Barton has tripped and they've asserted themselves onto it and have found those punishments. Baron and that dragon fight that just happened moments ago are really the most current and the most recent examples. Speaking of which, here's another one, another Ooh. trip up, so lucky. Oh, you can dash out, but you're still suppressed and Tommy Gun making the advantage on that one. Slaying out the jungler, that's a 40 second death timer while the opposing team has Baron, these towers. Not long for this world. You can root him, you can toot him, you can shoot him, but the tower does go down. Tommy Gun, can you stall this oh. one back? The curtain call is out, and he is absolutely shut down. Will more come? Filsom's trying to slow up Mike OG, and the fourth shot comes in huge, but Filsom gets the credit. Yeah, and with that one, they, they were in the right spot to make the pick. They just stepped a little bit too far. They shouldn't have been current, like really currently pushing for that turret, especially with how those members are positioned right now. Persuasion was still in the mid lane. You had Arrow Burp and Tuki in this top side. So it's two versus three naturally. And of course that overstep does eventually lead for death, but they still have that laning pressure because of the Baron that they have. They push Baron into all three lanes, but Disco Guy is just like, no, one more pike for me, two more. 
They want to get more on this one. The Lux is on the way out. Persuasion, the barrier, not going to do anything here as the CC is what really matters. And the burst there was enough to maybe take them down, but that's Baron off of now all members of the side of Lee's McRae Barton with the kills, still with the gold advantage, mind you, after being just pushed in on towers. Mm. They're holding it together somehow, and this feels like the last stand. They were really playing that Baron like sort of power play correctly for the side of Barton. But Lee's McRae, they got a little bit too overzealous, too eager, tried to find things that they shouldn't have gone for. And even though it is very proper to actually spread out that Baron power, like that Baron buff into all three lanes, they just weren't doing it in a respectful manner to their opponent. The two members in the bottom, two in the top, one in the mid, just never gives you enough tools to find a fight and not enough to get away from one as well. So losing that Baron buff only moments, like I think it was two minutes after they were able to pick it up, now puts them on the back foot once again with the 2,000 gold deficit. At this stage, that 2,000 gold, really not a big difference, is just the way place of like where that 2000 gold is put on and it is on the disco guy and it is on to Olshi nugget who have massive massive inventories right now like yeah you have two, two like two completed items on Jin. he is very close to getting that third one he has 2000 gold in his pocket right now he can go ahead and buy back that essence reaver or that second infinity edge if he so chooses and come back to this dragon fight with like a massive power spike this is Lee's McRae not going gentle into that good night after the oh, absolute no. stomping that happened game number one. Maybe a stomping here as Gyoza Sama gets one. Oh no, it's all going topsy turvy for Lee's McRae. His arrow's on the run out too. That's another one. Mike the OG on the way out. Lux trying to stall out the persuasion is getting persuaded on with the flag and drag. So lucky is trying to solve this one there. The binding is there, but is it enough just at the edge? The answer is no, and another mountain drake will go to the hands of Bart. Well done there. With the second Mountain Drake, these turrets are just going to be paper to the side of Barton. Just want to sort of look as an example as this turret already is extremely unhealthy and it just falls in a mere moments. And continuing on this push, you have 10 seconds left on Tommy Gun, 20 on Persuas, and Antuki with that 10 as well. There's no way that they're able to defend this second turret in this bottom lane. They might be able to try and hold on to this mid lane, or this inhibitor, but. Okay, my that just took buddy. my breath away. Yeah, okay. You know, you got four. They just wiped you in a fight. And the rest of your that team's not there. Not, mm, not the right play at this time. Mm. Okay, you know what? You shake it off. You deal with the death timer. You're sub 40 seconds. You get back to it. I think he was just a turret <laughs> ahead of himself. That's all it was. Like, if he made that play underneath the inhibitor turret, I think that would have been a smart play. Just to hold sure. on long enough for the rest of his team to get there. But it was just... A moment too early and just too eager to try and find some kind of pick and hold on to it. And so Lee's McRae just creating slight deficits to continue to keep them in this hole that they have because of this massive goal differential and just this powerhouse that is this bottom lane of 12. I'm really bad at math. 12 and 0. Yeah. Bottom lane of Oshinoge and Gyozo Sama. Like they oh, were no, struggling we in that bottom lane. Oshinoge. We have a death on yeah. Oshi Nugget, so... Yeah. It, it but yeah, it's a 12 and, 12 and 1, yeah, excuse me. So, it's the same ratio is the good news, right? It's yeah, still it's a 12 KD, uh, is, yeah. is, is, is the fun there. Uh, Baron, taking up a little desperately now for Lee's McRae there, and I don't think you want to be in the pit against this team. Or, this ult is down. They're trying to get over, and that's going to be a nice ultimate on the outside from Tommy Gun. but Disco Guy's oh. rampaging on through. The steal is there. Tuki could not try to get it. It all goes into the hands of Disco Guy, and now they're over the wall, back on it massively. Tommy Gun in some real trouble. That's so lucky, sticking on him like glue. Mike the OG nice. is about to be Mike gone right out of that one absolutely obliterated and only one surviving it's the support arrow burp having to run back to this one we'll see if he can defend the base i don't think it's likely no it's not looking bright for the side of lee's mccray they're gonna grab this minion wave and just force it down like a battering ram through the mid lane probably gonna be able to grab that second turret and then maybe get some damage onto that first uh that inhibitor in the mid but they are going to also take some in the top side as well with Disco Guy on that split push duty, doing exactly what he needs to do, optimizing the Baron buff as much as possible. And even though it is only the first Baron buff for Barton, we'll see if they're able to grab anything more than what Lee's McRae was able to get with theirs.
They're still playing with a lot of respect on this one is what I like to see from Barton. They, they, yeah. they won respectfully in their first game, right? Not getting overconfident. Now, maybe at the beginning stages of this game, either showed a little bit of hubris or just shell shock at the ability to come out and win lane that Tukey and Tommy Gun really did very well. Now that's been flipped on its head entirely. The game is completely back in the control of Barton College here after just a few short plays relatively to get them back up to this one. 30 to nine, the real difference here is towers, dragons, barons even are all equal otherwise. The CS actually favoring Lee's McRae in a couple places as well. It's just all this kill train that has been running rampant for the side of Barton College. Yeah, so even though you are looking at this game as a whole, where it's like the early game was very much, I would McRae's sort of win. They had Tukey playing massively in that top side, was able to beat Disco Guy's Kale, turn online with that split push pressure. But then it was just the fact that Barton has just kept their heads cool during that mid game. They said, look, we're a team fighting team. Let's get to that stage to where we will always be able to group up as five and just completely run at Lee's McRae. And that's what they've been Ooh. doing time and time again. And again, zero and eight on this pike. Arrowburp just not getting to participate in this game. With no, he's absolutely on the outside looking in, and that's never where you want to see a pike. They also burn a very critical ultimate coming out of Tommy Gun there. So Misfortune not going to be able to power down through that one just yet. And still playing this one very carefully. They know the Lux Binding could be deadly. They know Tukey still has a lot in this tank left to give, so they are trying to play at the absolute apex of their range here. Wait for the minions to come in. Wait to siege this tower properly. Do it all by the book here. But even so, their health bars are still getting absolutely battered and broken and bruised here. Top lane still pushing, actually, very well for the side of Lee's McRae. So despite the appearance of them being completely on the back foot, this is not an easy siege for the likes of Barton University. No, not one bit. And now they're going to go ahead and get that Ocean Drake, even up the Dragon score for both the teams, making it 3-3 three and three respectively. And with that 35-minute mark, it means Elder Drake's going to be next, but I don't think this game's going to last any bit longer. Oh, no, does it look like it's going to come on down to this one as Tukey taken out, and he's been such a gatekeeper thus far. Ulshi Nugget going legendary as well as Tommy Gun out of this one. Arrow already just up, just down. Persuasion and Mike, the only two left. They're trying to get out. It's not going to happen. Yozasama, 7-0 and 11 on this Xerath support, just crushing it. Absolutely phenomenal fight. They divided up Lee's McCray into really just sizable portions and then just took their pick on who exactly they wanted. Proper call onto that fight and Barton showing the power that they are working as a single unit and not just a member, like just not just teams of members of players. Oh, that man. you're gonna make this a 2-0 sweep with a 36-9 kill score. Barton, take it 2-0. They melt the base like a cardboard castle with a garden hose. Just absolutely destroyed. 36 minutes, 36 kills. All go into the credit of Barton College. They absolutely lock it on down there and take it the distance. We thought, we thought for a second we might see the coveted three-game series. It evades us today. My dragony friend. It's. Oof. I was really looking forward to Lee's McCray bringing that to a third game, but it was just they did not have the. I would really say it's just like the training yet. Like they are a young organization. And patience, the fact yeah. that they were able to get to that stage where Tukey was just dominating in that York split push. But I think, yeah, exactly what you said the patience to just say, let's hold on to the split pushing comp. Just play it properly, play it out, and we will just whittle away and make sure that this team fight composition that Barton has concocted will never be able to get to that stage where they are able to become that five-man clump that it just death balls through the entire Summoner's Rift. So it is something where if you ask a higher, like sort of like a higher ranking or higher reputable college, say like Maryville or um, even like rmu and ask him how is it to like create and execute a split push, split push composition they'll say it is fairly easy it's really how collegiate is supposed to be played and that is what i think lees mccray should focus on they should focus on like one style one specific composition mm -hmm. and then really optimize it because like it like a like i keep reiterating myself you guys are young you are new to the scene 
really try and find yourself, find how you win. It may not be split pushing. It may just be solo carry, like Kogma, Lulu, protect the ADC comp. Find that way that you have been continuously winning and refine it. And for Barton, Barton is that step up. Barton's the ones that like, hey, we found how we win. Recon mid, it's not traditional, but it works. We refined it and that's what we did. And that's how we came into this 2-0 series. We know how to execute that style. And it's really just a learning lesson. And luckily for Barton, they were also able to pick up their first series win for the season yeah barton moving to one and three wouldn't have expected the th- uh, zero three record coming into this series the way they played yeah. game number one game number two showing a little bit of what happens when they ease off the gas pedal there they did obviously have a substitute coming in as well uh giosama really a shining light past the first five minutes of this game you know it was a slow Definitely. lane to get started with that zero support that so deftly fooled us into thinking it was going mid at first um even though we should have known better uh <laughs> but then you know he gets seven zero and eleven by the end of it right just absolutely crushing it on through barton a couple tricks up their sleeves so definitely a team to watch out for if you know any of the uh, other schools here that are in the same division might be tuning in tonight doing their homework on their opponents that's a tough one and you, you touched on it so well. i think that the tools are here for the side of this oh, yeah. McCray University, right? They have so much that worked well. Like I think, okay, so take Arrow, right? Had a really rough second game there when everything else was seeming to go quite well for the rest of the team. You put them back on Braum instead of yeah. the likes of that Pike. I think you have so much more effectivity here that you, you just need to get it all into the same game, get all irons hot at the same time. Tukey turned it around really well. Tommy Gunn consistent throughout. So definitely a lot of hope for this team and, to both of these teams, we obviously want to thank them for appearing on broadcast tonight. It's, uh, you know, most games played Saturday afternoons. It's the weekend. These are college students. They got games tomorrow. It's the East Coast. It's late for both of these North Carolina schools. So obviously, huge thanks to them for agreeing to appear on stream tonight. Obviously, big congratulations coming out to the likes of Barton College as they did find their first win in the season and hopefully more to come for both of these squads. That's going to do it for us tonight, of course, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kyle Corbis. I've been joined by Coco the Dragon. You can find us both on Twitter. Let us know what you thought about these particular games, of course. And before we do throw it out, we do, of course, want to tell you about GameStop coming through and their wonderful sponsorship, everything they're doing for us this particular season with their weeklies and the performance center that they're building. GameStop.com slash esports is where you can find all that information. But if you like League of Legends, CSGO, Overwatch, Madden, Rocket League, Hearthstone, Smash, Overwatch again, Team Fight Tactics, more CSGO, Madden, Hearthstone, all of the fun action coming down your way. Well, this is the place to get it. There's a schedule for you there. All the esports your heart can handle and more. But that's going to do it for us, ladies and gentlemen. We will see you same time, same place next week, every Tuesday night, all the way through Thanksgiving. And then again, after the holiday break. Of course, that's 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 Eastern, right here on Sea Star League. But for tonight, we must bid you adieu. Thank you so much for watching, ladies and gentlemen, and we'll see you next time.